Our next speaker is Dr. Tienzi Lop, who is the Vice Chancellor of Northwest University in South Africa. He was appointed in 2004, having been Vice Chancellor before that of Pochefstrom University for Christian Higher Education since 2002. Dr. Eloff became CEO of the Consultative Business Movement in South Africa in 1990 and went on to facilitate the signing of the National Peace Accord in 1991. In 1995, he was appointed Chief Executive of the National Business Initiative, which was formed as a merger between the Consultative Business Movement and the Urban Foundation. He served as Chair of the Council of Association of Commonwealth Universities this association from 2009 to 2011 and chairperson of higher education South Africa from 2007 to 2009. So please welcome Dr. Eloff. Perhaps I can start. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Obviously a great pleasure to be here, to be back at the ACU, see some of the older and also newer faces. Um, I. Um, I think I want to add my voice to the others saying that uh, Sir David did really a great job in laying a foundation for, for our session and, and the other sessions. Um, and in, in that sense, one can almost only build on it uh, and, and give responses to that, because I think that's really the big picture, and both the two previous speakers have done so already. My contribution is one on how I think higher education could respond in one of many ways to this. And uh, obviously, as with the other speakers, this input wants to elicit discussion both inside and outside the session. And the, the essence of it is that universities should, in responding uh, for the next 100 years, if you wish, uh, be more outward looking than, than inward looking. Now, business at the moment, for those of you who follow the, the uh, discussions in, in business journals and economic uh, journals is in a crisis of its own. There are many hard questions asked about the free market system, about capitalism, about the reason for the existence of business and, the, and its relationship to society. Uh, Jim Collins and Jerry Porras in their book uh, Building to Last or Build to Last coined the term big, hairy, audacious goals or bags or be hacks if you wish. And they make the point that in the business environment where change is as rapid as any place in the world, this big setting a big, hairy, audacious goal or a bag is the boldness to be prepared to change the nature of a business existence in order to attain business goals. And at the bottom of that is to survive, to be sustainable. And so bags are meant to shift business, to change the way important in which the environment looks at business, not the other way around. Not the way in which business looks at the environment, but in the way the external environment looks at business. And it could even mean a possible shift in business itself. And that means that the organizations who want to change in this way must have a constant sense of unease and out of comfort zone view. Now, this is not um, untrue of universities as, as we've heard also. But it also asks for a ruthless corporate commitment and confidence. So the idea is, can we apply this rule from another sphere, from business, to our business? We have many good universities around the globe. If you speak about rankings, you see many good universities according to those rankings. The criteria you know better than I do. The question is, has this good, the definition of good, not just become a game of comparison? And not the perpetual test in terms of the adaptability and responsiveness to the environment. If you look at all those criteria, they mostly about shorter term issues. They're about how I'll compare with the other thousand on the list. The big danger of this ranking movement and this other speakers who have had the same criticism, is that focus remain on, remains on where we stand with little room to where we are moving. I think that's a, that's a great danger if we, if we remain with the idea of a good university. And the question could be asked, will this 
this ranking movement and the culture going with that create the necessary environment for the whole of the higher education sector, inside and outside the Commonwealth, to move from good universities to truly great and relevant and responsive universities. Why do we need great universities? Listen to David, to what he said, and to others who said the same. I believe that in taking charge of the future, as the session is called, the industry, we, should now have boldness to face the brutal facts and to take the future of the sector seriously. Now, I'm quite aware, having been involved with the ACU coming from Africa, that our circumstances, not only by individual university, but by region and by country and even by continent, differ dramatically. I do, however, believe that the picture that was painted this morning does not present only a danger to the developed world. On the contrary. We in Africa have many of those problems and more. We have pollution. We have exploitation. We have resources squandered, etc., etc. The same can be said for every continent of the world. And therefore, we cannot, as universities, have an ivory tower approach and I don't I don't mean the sort of medieval thing. I mean the inward looking focus to say, how can I become a good university, either in the rankings or outputs or the number of graduates I produce or whatever. If we are outside society, our voice will not be heard, our views will not be seen, and our potential contribution to society will be grossly undervalued we may forget that we have responsibilities to the broader society. And in this process, we'll have to balance what we're all forced to do as vice chancellors, short-term effectiveness and efficiency with the real strategic drivers aimed at sustaining the higher education business. And for this, we need sufficient levels of adaptability and agility, not to be rolled over by the changes, but to utilize their momentum. And this, I believe, is where an idea, a concept like a bag or bags come or comes in. Might not be a bad idea, and, and when I talk about this big, hairy, audacious goal, I don't mean for the ACU necessarily. I don't even mean for all universities exactly the same. It may be that individual universities must do this. It may be that groups of universities in a country must do this, or a region or a continent. But it could also be that the members of the ACU consider this. Formulating, thinking about such a goal would allow constant awareness of the future and the responsibility for shaping it. If I may give you an example, in the late 80s and early 90s in South Africa, business had a saying, sort of a classical saying by business, uh, the business of business is business. So don't confuse us with politics. You know, we don't like apartheid, but we're not going to get involved. And in that period, one or two wise business people changed this to slightly different, but very, very important, to say, no, the business of business is to stay in business. And this, in a sense, even though it's only a word or two, is a bag. It's changing the focus from, leave me alone, I'm producing widgets or gold or diamonds, to what could and should I do to make sure that I can keep on producing diamonds or widgets or furniture. This will allow, I believe, an environment in which awareness exists of the fact that the underpinning mission, service responsibilities, opportunities and challenges will in any case change constant, continuously. I believe there are some, of, some brutal facts that we all have to look at. Three sets. It's a truism that the world around us changes quicker than we can keep up with. And technology is only one example. And again, it may be that there are individual universities that are keeping up, but they're the exception. Us from the developing world are indeed struggling to keep up. 
Secondly, our response rate to opportunities, decisions, curriculum design, equipping students with appropriate skills, does not shape our business. It's often, often just getting them through the mill to get the subsidy from the government or to get higher in the rankings. We do not, do not realize enough that we're in the linking business. I think Stephen spoke about this. Linking of talent, linking opportunities, research, development, technology and services. And so in conclusion, I'm not going to go through all five of these, but these are the type of things that I think would drive our formulation of a bag. In our part of the world, the delicate balance between institutional autonomy and public accountability, and can I add, societal responsibility, because I believe that's an aspect of public accountability. The role of universities in the knowledge economy. I mean, you can hold a whole conference on the so-called MOOCs and on the, on, the, on the tide that's coming, the avalanche of technology. I thought until recently that the unpreparedness of school leavers is only an African phenomenon. Until I read recently, two weeks ago, that in national tests in America, only 45% of school leavers were found to be equipped to go to university. Language, calculus problems. I'm glad, but I'm also sorry. Fourthly, the demand for employability. There are still some academics who say we cannot and should not make students employable. It's not our job. I take the point that we're not little factories, we're not factories that can have little soldiers marching at the end of every academic year from the university gates right into the factory gates. But we don't help with the issues that David had mentioned when we have an aloofness about what the employability of our students mean. And finally, the appropriateness of teaching learning styles and technology in this technology immersed world. And I'm saying conclusion. We have a traditional goal in higher education. It's 800 years old, Stephen said, and I don't, I don't argue with that. It's basically, if we take away everything, it's generating and distributing knowledge. We break it up in teaching, learning, research, community engagement. Some of us say it must be world class. I'm saying perhaps we need a new bag, a new big, hairy, audacious goal. Not forsaking the past. I think the continuity is important. Businesses who change don't cease to be businesses. The essence must remain. But the focus, the focus must be externally, I believe. In times of change, they say the battle is between memories and vision. Dinesh showed that history could and should, should be rewritten. I must say, Dinesh, I didn't know that. Thank you very much about Vasco da Gama. Perhaps we should also, in the next 15 years or so, change and rewrite history. What would we like to have written about higher education in 15 years' time? When the ACU says we're 115 years old, what will we say? And is there a single script, or does it differ? The alternative of not doing this is I believe that universities won't go extinct. They will just become irrelevant. Thank you. In this first plenary of the ACU conference, um, we are three speakers speaking about uh, taking charge of change. My own input uh, is how should universities respond to a very rapidly changing environment, not just affecting their own uh, way of existence in terms of technology, but really world changes. And I, I bring up the concept of a big, hairy, audacious goal, or a bag, according to two guys called Collins and Porras. And in the business world, they've said that in this time of rapid change, you need that to keep you on course and to make sure that you respond to the environment. Uh, now, now, universities have not always been successful in responding quickly um, and being responsive. And so that's the challenge that I throw out to the audience. 
Well, at the moment, the traditional way for universities' existence, the rationale for their existence is to generate and, and distribute knowledge. Uh, I'm saying that's not enough. That is a big, hairy, audacious goal, but it's just big and hairy. It's not audacious anymore. We perhaps need to look at, at what uh, in, in the session earlier this morning was said, that things will be so qualitative differently. Uh, different in the 21st century that universities must adapt to say our core business is not just generating knowledge and distributing it but really contributing to the solutions of the 21st century. Look, universities are already involved in this but uh, and so various universities do their various things. Various countries, various regions like the EU have task teams involving academics but I wouldn't say that, that it exercises the minds of vice chancellors and professors in, 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 in departments to solve problem X or problem Y. It's often individuals taken out of universities. I'm pleading that universities themselves change their way of, of interacting with the environment, saying it's our responsibility with other actors to really address these issues. I'm often in South Africa called a managerialist, a little bit uh, in a derogatory term, but I believe universities can learn a lot from business. Uh, any organization that's, that's an organization has similar rules of governance, of management. Uh, often the subjects change, the content would differ, uh, some way may, way may want to make profits, other will not. And so I think universities can learn a lot from business. Uh, and, and business in itself is in crisis at the moment. The whole free market model, the model of capitalism is being asked big questions. And I think the same is happening with universities. Are we really there for the society that, that we serve? I think that should be taken seriously. I think the ACU is 100 years old. After 100 years, it's good to take some stock. And I think we're not just taking stock of the organization, the ACU, but as universities and as a sector in a very important part of the world. In order for universities to play an effective part in solving and addressing some of these issues, they need partners. They can't do it themselves. And I think the partnerships are, are, are four. The partners are four. It's universities themselves, governments, business, and the communities. And that's often called the quadruple helix. And if we don't do that, we won't really solve these very complex problems.